Well, good morning, everyone, and wherever you are just now, uh, can I wish you, indeed, can I pray for you, that you might have a very happy, joy-filled Christmas. Perhaps already you sense that joy as you've been opening your presents, or maybe you've been scrambling under the tree to see what Santa has left for you. Or maybe you've had that very cherished telephone call from far off um, family members who perhaps otherwise would have been with you here uh, today, but because of COVID, they've unfortunately not been able to join with you. And maybe that brought a, a sense of sadness to the occasion, but now you've spoken to them and you're feeling a wee bit better. Do you know, uh, both unbelievers and believers agree on this, that Christmas is meant to be a season of joy, although how we get that joy, how we make that joy, um, our ideas may be very, very different. For those who attach no real religious significance to this midwinter celebration, uh, that joy is of necessity man-made and it's man-centred. We make our own joy, they tell us, by, by the money we spend, by the food that we eat, by the company we keep, by the fun that we have, one with the other. And in that way, of course, everybody gets to experience some measure of joy at Christmas time. And that's good, that's great. But for most people, that's as far as it goes. In fact, that's pr probably as much joy as you can expect. But, you know, the Bible has an entirely different view on this. Um, the Bible tells us that Christmas is meant to be much, much more than that. Christmas isn't simply about the joy that comes from, from, from the turkey and from the trifle, from the tinsel and maybe even the trivial pursuit that you play after your dinner is over. No, Christmas is about not just normal joy. Christmas is about great joy. Because that's what the angels said whenever they came to the shepherds. Behold, we bring you good news of great joy for the, all the people. The coming of the Lord Jesus, Christmas, is meant to be a time of great joy. You know and I know that um, this world, um, our lives have been blighted and ruined and stained and twisted and broken because of human sin, our own sin, other people's sin. And yet, such is God's common grace, his, his kindness to everyone, that, that day by day he, he gives us experiences of joy in normal human life. And we're so grateful for that, that the human life isn't perhaps as miserable and as dark and as gloomy as it might be, as perhaps it deserves to be because of our sin. Uh, we do get uh, experiences of joy, praise God, every single day of our lives. But Christmas is meant to be different. Christmas isn't about normal joy. Christmas is about great joy. That's what the angel said. Good news of great joy. And whenever the, the wise men came to, to visit the Lord Jesus, whenever they finally found the king that they were looking for, Matthew tells us that they were overjoyed. It's the same word as, as great joy in the, in the original Greek. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's an over and above normal joy. It's a very special joy. Why? Why is Christmas joy better than any other human experience of joy? Because, the angels tell us, today in the city of David, a saviour has been born and he is Christ the Lord. Do you know, the reason why this good news of the birth of Jesus, why this good news is great joy, is because Christmas uh, goes to, to four different um, directions. And it's in those four different directions that we find this, this amazing great joy of Christmas. Christmas, first of all, goes to great heights. Great heights. Great joy to great heights. We're told that the angels said, uh, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill towards those upon whom God's favour rests. The shepherds, whenever they left, Mary and Joseph and the baby, they went home and were told they were praising and glorifying God for all that they had seen and heard. Therefore, from the surface of the earth to the highest of the heavens, there were men, there were angels, praising God. 
praising God out of the joy that they had experienced in both proclaiming the news and then experiencing the news that the Saviour had come. But Christmas joy also extends to great breadths. This, this news, this good news of great joy is for all the people. It's not just for the high and mighty, but it's also for the weak and for the lonely. It's for the Jews and the Gentiles. It's for older folk and for young people. No matter where you're from, no matter what colour of your skin, the clothes you wear, how you fill your day. It's not just for the first century, it's for all the centuries. This great joy that arises from this good news of the coming of the Lord Jesus is for all peoples at all times in all places. And this Christmas joy is a great joy because of the great depths to which it plunges. Here is a joy that is deeper than any of our fears. Uh, it's deeper than every grief that we will experience. Deeper than any sorrow or any pain that is ours. Because it's a joy that comes out of grace and mercy. It, it flows from these things. It's a joy that is deeper than any pit out of which our sin crawls. Where sin abounds, so not only does grace abound, but joy comes with that grace. It, it superabounds, says the Apostle Paul. There is no pit so deep but with the grace of Christ and the joy of the gospel. The joy, this, this great joy of Christmas time comes with it. And there you find undeserved mercy and unlimited grace there you just there you discover and experience great joy because great joy finally uh, a christmas joy is great joy because of the great lengths to which jesus went to make sure that we would have this joy we're told that he he left the glories and the wonders and the beauties of heaven he left his father's side and the wonder of, of being in, in the eternal presence of his Father. And, and, that, and, that, and that was broken, if you like, as Jesus came down from heaven to earth. He came to a people that, that ignored him, that despised him, that disowned him, that loathed him, that mocked him, and finally crucified him. But we're told... That it was for the joy that was set before him. The joy after Calvary that he went there and he endured the cross, despising its shame. And what was that joy? What was the joy that motivated Jesus to do all these things for us? To come to earth, to live that perfect life, to die on the cross with that sacrificial death. What was the joy that... What was the motivation for that? We were told, him, we were told that he lived and he died that you and I might experience great joy. The joy of knowing him, of knowing God as our Father, of knowing him as our Saviour, and experiencing this, this amazing peace with God, this reconciliation with God, as we embrace the gospel and trust in the Lord Jesus for ourselves, experiencing forgiveness of sin and a welcome into his family. I wonder maybe you could be struggling to find joy this Christmas. And if so, perhaps it's because you're looking for joy in all the wrong places. This Christmas, as you spend time together with some of your family and some of your friends, I do pray that not only you'll find real joy in their company, but also that you might experience what the Bible talk, talks about, this great joy. This Christmas joy, the joy of the angels and of the shepherds, this joy that God intends for you as you deepen your experience of the Lord Jesus Christ as your Saviour and as your Christ and as your Lord, as you come to him and take him as the joy of your life. May God bless you throughout this Christmas time and may, this, may you know this joy that passes all other joys as you trust in Jesus. For time and for eternity. God bless you.